Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. It wasn't long after the invention of the helicopter that militaries around the world saw it as an ideal platform for weaponry. Not only were they far more stable than aircraft, but they could hover in position, move vertically, and travel at lower speeds, drastically increasing the accuracy of guns, missiles, and other weapons. The first fully dedicated attack helicopter in the United States arsenal was the AH-1 Cobra. Though the U.S. had experimented with helicopter-based attacks through the Korean War, this Vietnam-era aircraft really brought the aircraft's capabilities to the forefront. The AH-1 was a single-engine helicopter developed by Bell. It was around 53 feet in length and had a simple dual-rotor functionality. Though it boasted a relatively low surface ceiling, it could achieve speeds of up to 220 miles per hour, which allowed it to provide extensive reconnaissance and ground support for combat troops fighting in triple canopy jungles. The average Cobra carried two miniguns or grenade launchers at a time, rocket launchers, and a forward-mounted cannon or machine gun. Over the course of several decades in conflicts, Bell decided to update the AH-1 rather than merely replace it. By the year 2000, this led the company to develop the AH-1Z Viper. Though similar in appearance, the newer Viper model boasts a different airframe and four rotor blades instead of two. It also has a slightly higher top speed, thanks to the improved composite materials used in construction. Most importantly, the Viper has a larger range and a 4,000 pound increase in max takeoff weight. This allows it to carry a heavier payload of rockets, air-to-ground, and air-to-air -air missiles. In total, the Viper can take off with some 16 missiles, allowing it to do serious damage against enemy targets. Depending on the mission, the Viper is often paired with another Bell helicopter, the UH-1Y Venom. Both aircraft feature rather similar avionics and mechanical elements, which allows for easier pre-flight maintenance. Indeed, ground crews work hard to ensure all the helicopters on base are in top-notch condition as they never know when they'll be called upon to perform in the field. Every environment is a bit different, which is why training is so important to the U.S. military's helicopter crews. This includes running drills in high altitude cold weather areas like Colorado. When the air is less dense, 
helicopters tend to behave very differently. In a mountainous area like Colorado, a pilot may skim the tree line, but still contend with being 5,000 feet above sea level. Paired with their UH-1 counterparts, these crews will run a number of different drills, including gunner exercises. low and high altitude maneuvering, and more. It's hoped that this training will ultimately add to the crew's versatility and allow them to better deal with challenging environments in the future. Like the Cobra before it, the AH-1Z is, first and foremost, a mobile weapons platform. Bell's redesign heavily focused on increasing the aircraft's missile capacity, while drastically improving its onboard targeting systems and other technology. In order to better familiarize pilots and co-pilots with these systems, many squadrons will conduct live fire exercises using weapons like the AIM-9 Sidewinder, a heat-seeking missile used in air-to-air -air combat. Of course, these missiles are far from the only offensive weapons at the Venom's disposal. Gunners also have access to the nose gun, typically a 20 millimeter three-barreled rotary cannon. When it comes to keeping a squadron of AH-1Zs battle ready, nothing is more important than regular maintenance. This includes checking the airframe for damage and other potentially serious problems, as well as maintaining all the moving parts like the engines, rotors, and weaponry. During maintenance training, it's not uncommon for mechanics to almost completely disassemble a Viper in order to get a better approximation of how the helicopter works and what it's capable of. As with most military aircraft, maintenance can be both preventative and breakdown oriented. After all, attack helicopters are called upon to perform some very intense jobs, and they, and their ground crews, need to be ready for anything. In the world of attack helicopters, few aircraft have achieved the lasting success of the Boeing AH-64 Apache. First introduced in the mid-1980s, this multi-blade tandem cockpit helicopter was highly successful at attacking ground forces while providing strategic air defense simultaneously. The Apache is heavily armed, well armored, and boasts an impressive suite of avionics and targeting technology. As impressive as they are, Apaches and other attack helicopters boast a relatively small range. This means that their designers needed to consider transportability when coming up with the aircraft. In the case of the Apache, 
The four rotor blades can be loosened and folded into a straight line along the fuselage. This reduces the aircraft's 48-foot diameter to just over 17 feet. This allows two full-sized AH-64s to fit inside a single C-17 Globemaster, providing they are placed tail-to-tail -tail at a slight angle. Even with the C-17's cargo ramp, it's imperative that the movement of the helicopter is carefully controlled. That said, unloading these aircraft after delivery can be very difficult. Apaches have no drivetrain, so the only way to move them when not under power is to tow or push them. Apaches are heavily armed, featuring a 30 mm M230 chain gun in the nose and four total hardpoints. Typically, a single helicopter will carry a variety of Hydra or CRV-7 70 mm rockets, air-to-air -air stinger missiles, and air-to-ground anti-armor Hellfire missiles. During missions, it's important that ground crews be able to supply and resupply Apache crews with weapons as quickly as possible. Once an Apache is on the ground, the goal is to get it fueled, loaded, and back into the fight as fast as possible. As with any other aircraft, maintenance and pre-flight checks are absolutely essential to the performance of an AH-64. It's not uncommon at a military base to see an Apache hovering just above the ground out on the airfield. It could be doing anything from testing the aircraft's navigation compass to performing a track and balance, which ensures the rotor blades are properly weighted to provide a smooth, efficient ride and maximize time in the air. These operations are generally performed by a specialized maintenance pilot, most of whom know these aircraft better than the combat pilots. Like other attack helicopters, Apache crews are often tasked with participating in live fire exercises. These can vary widely based on the particular type of tactics being practiced. For instance, these desert-based Apaches are firing their rockets at a range near the Ali Al Salem Air Base in Kuwait. There are several stationary targets placed on the field, which adequately replicate the movement of armored vehicles and tanks. It's easy to see just how much damage the Apache's various weapon systems can do, even in a concise amount of time. Ultimately, what separates attack helicopters from fighter jets is their extreme maneuverability and versatility. Apaches can hover, move side to side, and ascend or descend vertically without moving forward.
This allows them to evade a wide variety of weapon systems, whether from the air or from the ground. It also allows them to engage in various mission types, from surveillance to ground support to full-on attacks. For the troops below, having an Apache or Viper in the vicinity means they will always have friendly eyes in the sky to warn them of enemy movements or to take out vital positions before they have a chance to do harm. Undoubtedly, attack helicopters will remain essential to modern warfare for years to come. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.